What up, Card Kingdom family? Kenji back for some more drafting here on Magic Online. Back to our roots, back to some Vintage Cube. Although I've heard that this version of the Vintage Cube is actually rather strange. Um, a lot of people have said they've enjoyed it. A lot of people have said they're kind of on the fence about it. And some other people downright dislike it. I don't know yet. I have not played it, but apparently things like combat tricks matter uh now are relevant in this vintage cube which seems a little bit weird to me but we'll take it with an open mind as we jump into our pack one pick one as always thanks for watching don't forget to, uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and you can check out cardkingdom.com slash numot for all your magic card needs this does not look like a vintage cube pack to me i will say that right now the most vintagey card cube uh card is like crucible or one of the other artifacts i suppose well, if combat tricks matter, creatures are probably the way to go in this format, which means something like Wrath of God could also be good. But I'm going to stick with my roots. I'm going to take the Talisman of Curiosity and see what we can do from there. Oh, yeah. Mana Drain to follow up looks fantastic. This looks more akin to a uh, Vintage Cube pack, although eh, maybe more of a Legacy Cube pack. What are the other good cards in here? I like Ravel Master, Questing Beast, more Talismans. Mana Drain, I think, is easily the best card in this pack. Most powerful, for sure. So, makes for an easy pickup. Okay, there we go. We've got Sneak Attack. We've got Splinter Twin. Once Upon a Time. Copter. Ram and App, in addition to go along with that uh, Crucible of Worlds we already passed. I don't mind just taking the Splinter Twin here. That would lead us into a very, very clean direction. And uh, given this is the first time I've played this version of the cube, I don't think that's a bad way to go about things. Let's see, Brainstorm, Polluted Delta, Colagon's Command, Thoughtseize is always nuts. Hierarch is very good. There's a Chandra here. We'll just take the blue fetch and hope that Brainstorm comes back around, I guess. And even if it doesn't, just picking up any uh, blue duel will make the Delta worthwhile. There's the Steam Vents. Okay, well, we already check that off the list as we have delta and steam vents now with mana drain splinter twin so yeah like i said pretty good start here gruff triplets is always a weird one to see in vintage cube i mean it's okay with a card like flash or reanimate or something but it feels kind of weird actually sneak attack we just passed around it's good with that too though when i think of sneak attack i want to be sneaky sneak attacking like the eldrazi or grizzle brand or something not not a gruff triplet passing a consider here no big deal Speaking of, there's the Emrakul. Is there a chance we could wheel the sneak attack? Maybe. I wouldn't say it's super likely. Um, we do have a bunch of other good choices here as well. Like just taking Dak seems very good. Othari, one of the more stupid red-white cards. That along with fourth Irelingus. Just very, very powerful. Yeah, had we not already just passed the sneak attack, I would take Emrakul, but I think the DAC now makes more sense. Oh, geez, the uh, the Ulamog as well. Man, the sneak attack deck would have been really good. Oh, see, for example, here's Invigorate. So like I said, combat trick's a thing. Spellseeker versus Rogrin Triome, where the Spellseeker can already grab Mana Drain seems good. Blue-green duel doesn't seem bad, already fetchable. Treasure Cruise, always pretty good, especially with, like, fetches and DAC. Oh, this is, this is an interesting pick. You could take any number of these cards and be pretty happy. I think the land is probably the safest, but there was temptation there to take the Cruise for sure. Game lagged out there for a second. All right, Stern Scolding versus Recurring Nightmare. Stern seems all right. Nothing good here. Fugitive Codebreaker, I'm pretty sure, is not that good. But I suppose it's the only card here we would end up potentially playing, so it's a maybe. Relic is a good sideboard card. Seems fine. Kozlet came back around. Fulminator Mage also seems pretty good here. Fulminator Mage Splinter Twin isn't that bad. It could definitely be a thing. Uh, I think 
I would rather what? Take Colagon's command here on the splash, then take demand answers. Black, blue, green land. That's a maybe. Yeah, squeeze pretty good if you can have a discard outlet, but overall I don't think that's a very good card. Alright. I'd say that was an okay pack one. The best card we picked up was Mana Drain. And then some lands, but overall that wasn't anything exciting as we get what a scalding tarn here for our pack to pick one open. Taxian Probe would be solid. Let's see. Ethereal Forger is pretty good. Six mana, three, three flying Delve, though. And whenever it attacks, you can return an Insta Sorcery card exiled with it to its owner's hand. So it has the potential to draw you a bunch of different cards. Dragon Rage Channel are always great as well. Nah, blue, red fetch, too good. Too good, too good. Next pack. Oh man, had we taken that sneak attack, we would have had a really powerful deck. We saw Emrakul, Kozilek, now we're seeing Archon. Doesn't look like Displacer Kitten's doing all that much in our deck. I'd honestly rather take Chrome Mox here for the, the busted openers. Mox Diamond now. Oh, there's an Underworld Breach too. That card is always a nutty one as well. Well, huh? I think again, I just want to take the diamond here. There's Volcanic Island, Grizzlebrand, Frantic Search. Definitely getting more of the vintage card feels. Yeah, I'm just going to keep taking the good lands though. Tarn, Delta, Steam Vets, Volcanic, Rogrin, Triumph. Like, our mana is going to be basically perfect. Hey, and there's the Deceiver Exarch. Okay, so chalk that, or rather, uh, check that off the list. We've got the Deceiver Exarch. We've got the Splinter Twin. Now we just need more counters, more card draw. Maybe a backup Exarch effect. Seems good. Next up, we're going to get a currency converter. There's some card draw for us. Renin 6 with a couple of fetches already. Also, actually, not a bad splash card if we wanted to. Oh, that's interesting. But I think I like taking the currency converter. Blood Crypt. That definitely makes the Colagon's command much easier to splash for. What does this one do? What the heck? Three mana, two one with dash. Back up one. When this enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on target creature. If that's another creature, it gains the following ability. Double strike. Oh, just an aggro creature. You could also just take Goldspan. Goldspan over Blood Crypt. I guess I do need actually more spells here. So yeah, I'm going to take the Goldspan Dragon. Yeah, look at this. Berserk. Mutagenic Growth. <laughs> Guess we might play Figure of Destiny. Unlikely. Dragon Rage Channeler coming back, though, was good. Shouldn't be too hard to turn that on and get some good value. All right, there's another Black Fixer. That's great. Still fetchable with both Tarn and Delta. Reach came back as well. So, um, going to be on the lookout for Brain Freeze now because we can do multiple combos. And Breach actually just gives us some nice uh, consistency, I guess. If the combo dies, we can potentially get some of it back or whatever. The Cummins is in this too. <laughs> I guess I could play Preacher. Okay. 
Yeah, I need to take a lot of actual playable spells in pack three, but it's a good start. Best thing about this deck right now is the mana base. Looking real good. You know, I don't think blue is actually all that open, but... Kind of too late to, to pivot. And there's a whole breacher. All right. Easy, easy pick one of the third pack. We still need to find a way to... Like, I think I just passed an Echo Vions there in pack two. But whole breacher, even if you don't have draw seven effects for both players, is still well worth it. Card is just way too good. Let's see. We have Time Warp, Ledger Shredder, Miscalc. Kind of want to take the miscalculation for some more interaction here, although Time Warp is always a welcome sight. So, Currency Converter, Dak. Still need a bunch more card draw. How about a Faithless Looting here? Hogak is in this. <laughs> Karn is okay. Subtlety is fine. I mean, we do have Underworld Breach, so Faithless Looting is a little bit more tempting, but I don't have... I don't have, like, a Lion's Eye Diamond or something to really go off. I wonder if Subtlety is just the right pick here. That might be better. There goes a channel, but we did find a Magda. That's great. Galvanic Iteration is super fun. All right, so second combo piece acquired. Would be really nice if we could also get Kiki Jiki just for that extra redundancy. Hey. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Another really strong pack. Wow, some of these cards, I don't even know what they do. Faldorn, Dread Wolf, Herald. Whenever you cast a spell from exile or a land enters the battlefield under control from exile, you make a 2 2 wolf. Discard a card, exile the top card you library to play at this turn. Huh. Carnage Interpreter. ETB, discard your hand, then investigate four times. Weird. These are some weird cards, but whatever. Called Shot Kiki Jiki. Xander's Lounge. That is the perfect triome. Better than Rogrin. Though I really do want to take Otawara here, but... Probably should just take Xander's Lounge. Balance? Oh my... Teferi? We can splash Teferi, too. I do have the Rogrin, after all. Oh, man. Altar of Dementia with the infinite combo? That doesn't really matter, because... Obviously, you can just kill the person. Uh, what am I at? 19-ish playables. Let's see. Rafine's Tower? Actually, not bad as well here now. If we're planning on playing all three of these colors, white, blue, and black. Damn, Fallen Shinobi is also super spicy. I wonder if this is too many tapped lands, though. I guess this is only three tap land, but... Oh, yeah, eight. We're at, still at 19 playables. All right, let's take Flame Tongue. Are we ever playing O'Hare Axonal? No, probably not. Let's see. Savin's Reclamation can get back Pestermite, Hullbreacher, and Deceiver Exarch in addition to Dac and Fulminator Mage. I could see running that card as a little cute um, value piece. Ledger Shredder Wheeling was nuts. That's great. Okay. 
Oh, yeah. Faith is Looting's also really good here. I think this deck ended up pretty good, actually. Like I said, it could have used a little bit more card draw. Um, but we didn't end up with none. We have good mana, we have good cards. It's a weird vintage cube deck, but this is a weird vintage cube iteration, so... Let's see, do I need to run any basic planes or swamps? I don't think so. We have two black sources, two white sources um, in triomes, and then we have the double fetch. So, yeah, and we have what? Mox and diamond and uh, currency converter can make treasure. So yeah, I don't even think we need a basic. I think we just add islands and mountains. Call it good. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So they all add blue. This would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven blue sources. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten red. That seems fine. Actually, I get access to one more, so maybe just go up on another island. Oh yeah, our mana is gonna be fantastic. Okay, let's give this baby a shot and go to round one of this vintage cube draft. Alrighty, and here we are for round one of this vintage cube. On the draw with a hand that looks fine. Got a mox diamond, so we can hopefully uh Keep up with the opponent a little bit to, uh-oh, turn one Thraben Inspector. I don't know if my deck does very well with, versus, like, mass creature decks, because I don't have a good way to kill a lot of stuff. Um, I wonder if there there is a very good chance I'm going to have to evoke this subtlety, which is not ideal to two for one myself, but... We'll see. Hopefully they just go land pass and plan on sacrificing their clue. Island is the follow-up. Okay. And we're going to go for diamond back. Wildly unfortunate, but it is what it is. Well, this game might come down to being on the draw, because if we were on the play, I would have been able to resolve that back on turn two. But who knows? I mean, we still have the Splinter Twin in hand. We're one more land off of Teferi, and I can just hard cast the Subtlety next turn, so... Fulminator Mage not looking particularly good versus this opponent. Jace. Um, yeah, let's do this. Because if we rip a land next turn, I get to Teferi the Jace. Oh, sorry, Teferi, rather. Not Teferi the Jace. I don't think Splinter Twin on Subtlety is terrible, but I don't think we really want to go for that. What did they do? They did put it back on top. Okay, not a bad draw. A 
Assuming they're just going to refire off the Jace, we will get to miscalc it. So Fulminator Mage is going to come out. Uh, just one of our random creatures, I guess, comes in. Nothing particularly compelling here. All right. You leak. I miss Kelk. Tis only fair. Come on, land for Teferi, please. That will do just fine. They could have like a mana tithe, though. Bad news is I don't get to fetch one of my um, other sources here, but as long as the Mox Diamond doesn't go away, that shouldn't particularly matter. Hold out double blue, feign some nastiness. All right, attack to ferry for one. Pass. I'm okay with that. Let's just start off by drawing again. Spell Queller, my talisman? I guess we might as well stern scolding that. Counterspell, okay. Well, you got me. Sure. <laughs> and I guess I'll go ahead and just shock myself and play the Fulminator Mage then. So they've got counter magic. Mana leak, counter spell, queller. But if this Jace, or not Jace, if this Teferi remains active, it's going to be pretty hard for them to uh, overcome the raw card advantage. Granted, I'm not really doing anything else. Well, that's very good. All right, we'll just keep up the pressure then. I guess maybe I should be holding on to the land. I have Faithless Looting in the deck. <sighs> I 
Was this Mystic Confluence or something? Subtlety of their own. All right. Good enough. They even did it before I got to untap my land, so a little bit of value there. The main reason we countered the subtlety is because now Teferi looks like he'll live at least one extra turn, but subtlety also just trades with my own, right? A little bit strange just the queller i guess they're planning on chumping but now one once to ferry up upticks three loyalty means the spell queller will still not be able to kill it by itself all right that's a big regent okay still got a game Yeah, maybe maybe I should have went for twin on subtlety. I don't know. Hmm. I do have faithless looting in this deck, right? Yeah. Okay. So there is something to be said about playing the delta, using it to thin out my deck a little bit. But I think because we have faithless looting, I'm supposed to hold on to it. Rather unfortunate. All right, well, I guess I'll go for it now. So it, when the regent attacks, we can at least make a, uh, it's unfortunate, but we can make a token to block the regent and at least keep our uh, Teferi alive for another turn. Yeah, they've got a decent blue-white control -y deck. Kind of flooding out here a bit. Oh, they're not even bothering attacking. All right. Uh, we don't actually want to grab one of the try lands because if we draw them we can cycle them away since we don't need the mana sources anymore speaking of <laughs> okay speaking of Remember, we still have Kiki Jiki to draw here. So let's go Exarch, attempt to tap the Regent. And we're eight card deepers, eight cards deeper than our opponent, but feels like we are on the brink of still losing.
Now, if they don't attack the Teferi here, I can tuck instead. Getting rid of the Regent would not be bad. Oh, that's interesting, too. Seven's Reclamation can get back DAC for now. Oh, now we're just going to draw. All right, so we go with Shredder first. Go for Reclamation on DAC, trigger the Shredder. Draw a couple cards here. Okay. Wandering Emperor, end of turn. Oh man, Wandering Emperor would have hosed us had we drawn the Kiki Jiki. And we're 13 cards deeper in our deck. Oof. How many lands do I have left? 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, I have one land left and 10 cards. My god. Brutal. So what do we still have left? We have like Kolagon's Command, Kiki Jiki, Flame Tongue Kavu, Pestermite, Hull Breacher, Dragon Rage Channeler, Currency Converter. So pretty easy chump on the Regent, I believe. Assuming it attacks. Oh, they're both going face. That's terrifying. Okay, I guess I'm just going to take it then. I mean, if they have like a time walk effect, good beats, that is what it is. Maybe they do like a settle the wreckage or something. They had to have drawn something here. Huh, that's a good draw. Man, I'm really tempted just to tuck their regent now. What else can I find? I don't have another counter to hit, right? And I don't have a way to get one of those counters back. Okay, yeah, what I think I'm going to do here is lead with Goldspan Dragon. Go to combat. Oh, 
Okay. They're at one. We'll go ahead and tuck their region then. And do I need to loot? I don't think I do. I guess there's no harm. Say go. I'm not going to run the Kolagons into all that open mana. They can't kill me on board right now. And we have them dead on board. Council's Judgment. Okay, we're going to let that resolve. They do have the Exile Gain too, but if they use that ability, I would use it in response. Uh, Goldspan Dragon is the vote. Okay. So still... With only one card left in hand, I think we're fine. Oh, maybe I should have used the treasure in response to that. Because now the treasure only adds one. But they've already, already used Mana Leak, so that's not um, relevant. Nice. Okay, well, interesting. They left themselves in a really precarious spot in that previous game. What are we cutting? What did I say? The Fulminator Mage looked really bad versus them. Uh, Relic of Progenitus, I guess, is okay. I mean, it, it kind of gets their Murktide Regent. I don't even know if that's better, though, than just, like, Fugitive Codebreaker. It might not be. Let's just add the code breaker. Could even add the figure of destiny for extra pressure. And in fact, maybe the figure of destiny was better because it comes down early. This hand looks quite good. That was a long game one. Ooh, they've got a diamond. Seriously, Diamond Pass? That is a little bit of a strange play, I think. What on earth just happened here? There's no stifle effect, is there? Let's get our white, black, blue. Yeah. That's pretty good, too. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and run out the mocks. And I'm going to eat the faithless looting here and pass. There's no rush. I don't need to run anything out here. What would be hilarious is if they play out Jace and go for Brainstorm. They didn't see Hole Breacher from me last game. GTA. Okay. Huh. All right. Probably going to run out the pester mite at this point in time.
just to start a little bit of a clock. And yeah, I guess we'll play the code breaker out. So let's baseline what? Six, and I have no instance and sorceries in the graveyard currently. I don't know, maybe it was better to pass there with Breacher and Mana Drain open. Pass again. Okay. I guess I don't see a reason to do anything then. I also don't want to overcommit, and playing out the Dragon Rage Channeler currently doesn't look like it does much. Though I guess if I play Hole Breacher here end of turn, it does put them on a two-turn clock, so... I guess that's what I do. <sighs> no, not casting that. Can't hold up Drain. What is going on? Their hand must be completely garbage. Regent with counterspell backup. Well, if I drain this and they do have Counterspell, we still just play Goldspan and win, right? Yeah, that's fine. Oh god, it's only a 3-3. They didn't even have anything to eat with it. Jeez. I'm just dead any number of ways here. That was a weird game. Okay, but we got the first round, and let's go do that two more times. Okay, let's go on to round number two. On the die roll, we'll be on the play. Good mana, but not really much going on with this hand. I think we can probably do better. That is a little bit better, I think. Um... Who's on the watery grave here, I think, makes the most sense. Actually, I should lead on Delta, and the reason is, if they do play like a Mana Dork on turn one, I would like to be able to Stern Scold it. So we can just grab... Uh, Volcanic here or something. That is not what I wanted to see. I guess we'll just grab Rogrin now or Xanders. Uh, we want to grab blue red. I guess it doesn't matter which one. Either way is fine. GLHF. Good news is we can Kolagons command the Soul Ring, but bad news is they do get one turn with it. Power or toughness, two or less. 
that worked out perfectly. And now we get to blow up their elf and their soul ring. Holy smokes, this is nice. LOL. <laughs> Artifact, two damage. Nice, man. Woof. Very good for us. Ooh. City of Traders. Okay. Huh. Into a pest infestation for two one ones. I mean, I guess I'm going to get rid of Splinter Twin here, and that allows us to play Teferi this turn. I wonder if they have, like, a natural order. That would make sense to why they did that. Yeah, well, when you know, you know. One big green creature coming up. Woodfall Primus, that can kill Teferi. Very nice. When you know, you know. Fulminator Mage to blow up their City of Traders. But we're still on a fat clock here. I actually think it's better to... DAC. And try to find some action. Yikes. Brutal. Well, we played this, I think, very, very well, but it looks like not going to pan out for us this time. Okay, Augur with a land on top in the Sylvan Library. Very good. It's an okay starter. I'm keeping the land in my hand in case we draw, like, uh, looting. Sure. I guess combat trick. Wait, why did the 1-1 one, one attack? Ah, walking ballista, sure. That's fine, too. DRC. I do have four card types in the graveyard. Um, what do we have versus that? Progenitus does a relic of progenitus doesn't really do anything here. They should have attacked with ballista. I was forced to block it. All right, good beats. Good beats, good beats. I could bring in Winds of Abandon on the splash. I wouldn't expect to overload it very often, but it seems solid versus them. Doesn't look like Fulminator Mage again is going to make the cut here. Let's go to game two. This hand is okay. <laughs> That's all it is. It's okay. Turn one, Xander's Lounge. Turn two, Tower plus Dragon Rage Challenger. Turn three, you can Pester Might. I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to mulligan this hand, but... Exploration, sure. Well, when your opponent draws Soul Ring every game, it kind of makes things garbage, huh? We did it. blow it up last game before they could do too much with it, but... Don't like my odds here. Man, again, another incredible draw. Holy smokes. Props. Pole Breacher here would have been so good. Stop their Sylvan Library. 
because library with Augur is going to let them play some extra lands. I'm going to go ahead and draw step, tap down their soul ring, take them off a little bit of mana. And then we can flame tongue the Augur next turn. Damn! All the mana dorks. So yeah, it's going to be better for us to flame tongue the Augur here still. They already have infinite mana with Rafelos anyways. Do not expect to win this one though. All right, down to six they go. Let's see if they have Hoof or... Oh my! Aldrazi? Eh, maybe killing the Rafelos would have been okay. Oh no, they just have Walking Ballista, right? That's what we saw. Walking Ballista still would have wrecked us even if uh, Rafelos wasn't on the battlefield. Pest Infestation into... Oh, <laughs> I love it. Uh, they win. They win just like Exaxes almost, because I have three toughness to block. All right, hey, what can you do? Their draw was incredible both games. We had a good draw versus them in the first game, but I, I mean, I would have had to have mulliganed to uh, had a chance there. So, good beats. OP with the nut draws and a good deck. Let's see if we can uh, win the last one, huh? All right, here we are for round three of the Vintage Cube. On the draw with a hand that looks a uh, little bit sus, but I think it's probably one that we can keep. If we want to, we can go Dragon Rage Channeler into Mox Diamond and immediately get a uh, trigger. It's not Numot, it's Numot. I'll give it a shot, though. What's the worst that could happen, you know? Could be that I'm supposed to cycle this Rafine's Tower. Am I recording? Who knows? The old hedgy mazy. Ooh. Oh, that's a really interesting draw, actually. Okay. So now I'm going to go Dragon Rage Channeler Pass. And then next turn, I can go Currency Converter, Trigger Dragon Rage Channeler, Mox Diamond, Discard uh, Land, Trigger the Currency Converter, and the Dragon Rage Channeler. It's really cool, actually. Another green deck, huh? All right, let's see here. So Converter, Trigger... Hoping we see something we don't really want, I think. Like that. Good to see that go away. Now we'll go diamond trigger. Throw that away, my lord. So we can already make an extra treasure with the converter, but I expect us to want to probably just loot here again. A 
Lord Skitter with the uh, cradle. And they get to exile my graveyard. Sheesh. All right, that's kind of neat, not gonna lie. I guess we'll eat the chrome mox. That way I can make a 2-2. Ah, there we go, that's good. Let's just go grab Volcanic here, seems fine. Remember the Rat Token cannot block. Probably supposed to just make a 2-2 with the Currency Converter. Um, this next turn would be my guess. Souls of the Lost. They have got some <laughs> brew going on over there. I love it. Some Sultai Poo brew. So they have Three, four, five mana if they breeding pool untapped. This is finally a match where we want to draw the damn uh, Fulminator Mage. Look at their mana. <laughs> All non basics. Okay, take two. One card left in their hand, so I'm feeling pretty good. Actually, you know what? I guess I'm going to make a treasure now, because they have a 2-3 anyways. I think I like upkeep tapping their cradle this turn, just to take away a bunch of mana. They're blocking or attacking with a 2-2 into my Deceiver Exarch. What does it mean? I think I'm okay blocking here. Actually, you know what? I won't. It's a free roll attack on their part, and I bet you they don't have anything, but I should have activated the Currency Converter first. Seen if I was about to draw one of the combo pieces. Uh, yeah. That'll do just fine. Nice. That even actually gives us a little bit of redundancy as well, right? If they can kill one of these two creatures, we have the Kologon's command to bring it back. Nice. All right. We'll take the first game. And this time, uh, we do still want to bring in a Relic, seeing what they had. I'm going to take out the Savins, I think. They had the Skitter, which kind of hoses that, and I don't have much way to remove the Skitter. Yep, good enough hand for sure. I'm going to lead on just basic island turn one instead of playing out fetch or shocking myself for steam vents.
True name nemesis. That's got less than two toughness. Good freaking hit. All right, let's shred it up. Five turn clock starting on turn two off of the true name would have been kind of gross, huh? Because it would have hit for four with the exalted. All right, play some spicy artifact. The reverse shredder. Okay. Where's a hole breacher when you need it? Old Breacher with the Dak fade in would be real good. All right, let's go Luton. I guess we go like this because we might be able to play a five drop next turn. Or rather, we might want to play a 5-drop next turn. Seder Wayfinder. Uro, Skitter, and 2 land. And they took the Triome. Trigger the letter sh Ledger Shredder for both players. We actually need to discard a spell here. Um, dang it. Yeah, I guess I just discard the Chrome Mox. Because if I don't discard a spell, then they can uh, discard a spell of their own and attack our deck for three, which I don't think I want them to do. Oh, turns out they discard a land. Mm. That's too bad. If we had the uh, trigger stacked the other way, we would be able to see if they were going to discard a spell first. Yikes, that's bad. Wow. Pretty brutal. Okay. So they can now Uro, right? They've got five. Three lands, Skitter, and True Name. <sighs> well, that does not look like Uro mana. Sentinels of the Nameless City. Make a map. But they're holding up mana and not mapping here. All right, that is, once again, a little bit sus. Didn't see counter magic from them previously. Okay, so didn't. They hit a Weatherbloom command. And they left it on top. Ah, nice. Fantastic draw. Okay, let's loot with Currency Converter on the battlefield. Oh, man, we hit the whole Breacher, too. I guess I'm going to discard the Gold Span at this point. No, wait, that doesn't make sense. Actually, we can discard Relic. No, I need to discard a land to get the treasure. That doesn't work. Oh, I needed to draw another land here. If we had drawn another land, I could discard land and something else. Then Dragon, or Goldspan Dragon. 
and have four mana open still. Start to get non-creature, non-land permanent with value, mana value two or less. Ah, Goldspan is so good here though, isn't it? All these are super good here. Eh, I'll keep the Kiki Jiki. And we're not exiling because they're about to go for the Witherbloom command on it. Sure, I'll go ahead and shock myself. And say go. Set up for the hole breacher. We can make a 2 2 in response to them blowing up the command. Oh, they're going to flip Rona. All right. I for sure thought they would keep the looter around. Kind of got me there then. Hmm. Well, I guess we're going to let the Ro or DAC die at this point. Because we don't want to block this thing, right? Yeah. Uh, but what I can do is double block their sentinel and only lose my token, so that's not bad. Oh man, DAC with Hole Breacher would have been so good. Actually, you know what? I could still make that play. I could put Shredder here, Chump here. Dak takes five. And then I can hold Breach them. God, that actually sounds really good. Let's do that. Let's keep Dak alive one extra turn. Nice. So what's going to happen is they're going to draw two cards, but that turns into zero. Uh, I get two treasure, and then they're going to have to uh, discard both the cards in their hand. So good. <laughs> Witherbloom Command Emrakul. All right, uh, so now Faithless Looting looks really good while Currency Convert is on the battlefield still. Oh god, the Connive actually wrecks them too. If I can, like, double spell on their turn? That's sick. I mean, it works on my turn as well, or this turn, I should say. So I think we, I think we probably do it, right? Because they have to activate the ability, which means we just get another treasure here and they get no value. That's funny. Blow up their Zagoth Trium, I suppose. Ooh. 
Yeah, they're still kind of beating me down, don't get me wrong, but... We're doing some pretty cool things over here. It looks like two at DAC and Sentinel at face. This time we can make the uh, the block I could have made the previous turn. We'll throw the 2-2 two, two and the 2-4 on front of the Sentinels now if it attacks. Oh, it's not going to. Oh, no, it is. They are all attacking DAC. All right, Dac dies. Trade 2-2 two, two for Sentinel. Map reveals Baleful Strix. They are, well, they should bin that because I have Hull Breacher. Yeah, they did. That is a... Solid draw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. Damn. I guess I blow up their ignoble hierarch. And then same thing here, I'm going to Subtlety, and this is going to make them just discard their card in their hand. Because we're going to get a treasure in it instead. Frantic search, oh yeah, <laughs> another dead card. All right, we can race. Generous Ent Cycle for a land, sure. Zeator's Proving Ground, all right. What, currently a 6-6? Six, six. That's fine, I got a 10. Oh. That's really freaking good too, isn't it? Does that win? If I tuck the Ledger Shredder, attack with everything, they would go to one. All right, put them to one. They would need to find four points of damage, so Berserk would work. Uh, what other card would work? Hey, GG's. Invigorate, but we'll take it. All right, not bad. And that deck was not too shabby. It wasn't like the nut by any means, but uh, pulling off a 2-1 with it doesn't feel too shabby. Only loss was to the uh, mono green deck that just absolutely crushed us with soul ring draws and mana dorks every game but good stuff as always thanks for watching friends we'll see you back next week bye bye